what's up, what's up, can a nigga get in them guts, can a nigga get in them guts, what it do, this is your brother Bishop of Bishop's on TV, and I am back with another hit, and another one, this is my DNA test results with Ancestry, I said Ancestry, ain't no zesty results, this is my ancestry results with DNA, ancestry DNA. I can't get this right. We're going to do it over again with ancestry DNA. Yes. If y'all have been following my channel for quite some time now, y'all know that back in, what, a year ago or so, I did a DNA test results with my heritage DNA. And if you haven't seen that video, I suggest y'all go check that out. But if y'all don't want to go see it for whatever reason, I'm going to give y'all my results from my heritage DNA before I get into my ancestry results. So when he, he go. So when I did my heritage DNA, the results came out to Nigerian at 43%. Then I had Kenyan, Kenyan at 13.9%. Then I had Sierra Leonean which was at 11.19%. I said 11.19, 11.9%. All right. The West African at 9.3%. Then North African at 5.8%. Then of course I had some rape Europe DNA in me. The great rape European DNA, which um, it was 6.9 finish. Then uh, 5.2 Irish, Scottish, and Welsh DNA, and then uh, 0.8 Baltic. I also had some Asia, throw a little Asian in there, and West Asia, which at, which was at 1.8 percent. And then I had Mesoamerican and Indian at 1.0 percent for you Aborigine Sea Turtle Islander jackoffs. That's your one percent. Uh oh. I'm fully, I'm fully there. I'm fully Sea Turtle Islander. I can claim it 1%. Now, I did want to do another DNA test results with another company just to see how it'll match up. Just to see if it would be a little consistent. You know, because there's so many misconceptions and so many, um, I don't want to say false advertisements, but it's, it, it might be a little exaggerated narratives when it comes to these DNA test results of these DNA test kits. And so I want to see if these things match up or not. Which, by the way, man, I got to address something. All jokes aside, because I don't, I don't even take them serious. I don't take them clown serious. But all jokes aside, I've seen several different um, DNA test results on the internet. And um, I got I to gotta say some things before I reveal my ancestry uh, test results. I got to reveal some issues I have. Just some little tidbits with black folks doing these results. Because one thing I noticed is when they do have, let's say like 1% Native American DNA that shows up in their, in their DNA. Um, man, they act like that 1% validates that, that oh, well, uh, yeah, I, I knew my guy, knew my great-great-grandmother had, you know, high cheekbones because she was uh, Cherokee. It's always Cherokee too. It's always a woman. But yeah, that one percent. Let me let me let me say something real quick. If you were truly indigenous, as you claim to be, or your your great great grandmother, who you might know, or your mother knew, was full blood Native American, but you only have one percent. Native American that shows up in your DNA. I even give you two percent. Give give them an extra two, two point five if you if you just want to go crazy. A one to two point five percent Native American DNA in your bloodline. But you ignore, and this is what I really find funny. They ignore that twelve percent or fifteen percent or twenty even thirty percent European DNA in them. Now add that up. Let's do some math. Cause y'all math ain't math. If you have 12 to 20% European DNA in your 
bloodline, but you don't see no white folks at your family reunion. You don't see no Chichinskis. You don't see Bob from accounting. That's your second or third cousin. You don't see none of these Caucasoids at your family reunions, nor the fish fries, unless it's Bob the neighbor. And you say, come on, get your fish, get your fish plate. Go, man, get your fish plate. Come on, you want some fries too? Uh, big, uh, ain't, ain't, ain't sure. Can you, can you get him uh, some red pepper cake, a slice? Just a slice. Okay, all right, I see, I see them all. If you don't see no white folks at your family reunion, and you can trace everybody in your family reunion from first cousins all the way down to third and fourth cousins, and it shows that you have over 10% European DNA in your bloodline, then why the hell is you hanging on to that one or two percent Native American like that means something? Like that actually means something. And y'all be holding on to their life. I know it. I know it. We are Alequanians. We are Alequanians from the Valley of the Hudson. Education. If it's one and two percent, that means it's far, 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 far back. And it might not even got introduced directly to your DNA. It could have been introduced through the European side in your lineage. Or because it's one percent or two percent, you might not even have that Native American ancestry running through your veins. You just probably don't. So I just want to throw that out there because I'll be clinging on to that shit like God damn. Even when discovering yourself and realizing how African you are, you still want to act like that that Native American is just that significant. It ain't. I'm trying to tell you, it's not. 1% ain't shit. I hate to bust y'all. Oh yeah, oh yeah, bubble, but it ain't. God damn it. Ain't no little Pablo ass. I mean, god damn. Pablo ass looking motherfuckers. God, god damn. And she won't be having ass niggas. God damn, like, come on, man. Be proud of who you are. All right, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm just jokes. It's jokes. It's just jokes. I'm just talking to you. So y'all came here for the DNA test results. That's what y'all came here for. And I'm going to give it to you. Y'all want to hear? Am I 100% African this time? Do I have more rape European blood in me? And I'm only gonna call it rape, so don't, so don't get politically correct with me. It is what it is, because that's what it was. Or do I have more Native American ancestry? Was Dane Calloway right this time? Is the white man science factual? Let's see, let's see what happens. All right, so according to Ancestry, now remember those My Heritage DNA test results, but this is the Ancestry test results. Let's go. I'm starting from top to bottom, the most significant to the least significant. So, according to Ancestry, oh, and by the way, let me just throw this in here. These DNA test results are not 100% scientifically accurate. Yes, I do admit that. However, they're not, you can't just minimize them to entertainment purposes. And what I mean by that is, it is some scientific validity to these test kits. But again, these are based more solely on probability. So if you're showing a high percentage in this particular region, based on the way they um, study DNA, or the way they break down DNA, and it's also based on the countless data that they have accumulated, testing various different ethnic groups across the planet, then if it shows that high percentage in that region, that means that you can, it's a probability that you share DNA with these particular group of people. But they can't determine that 100% because there's so much more that you can tell from DNA. But more than likely, if you're not showing any Native American ancestry like that, but then you have so-called Hispanic people, Mexicans, certain Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Colombians, whatever, and they show a significant amount of Native American, Mesoamerican DNA in their bloodline, then 
you ain't got it. So I just want to throw that in there. So, but I do acknowledge the fact that these are not 100% scientifically accurate. I want to get that out the way. You're right. But it is some scientific merit to it. So let's just get right into it. I'm, I'm done talking. So, coming in at number one, I am 27% Nigerian. So, it was like 43% with my heritage DNA, ancestry, is 27%. Still the highest percentage in my DNA pot chart. Um, coming in at number two, Cameroon, Congo, and Western Bantu peoples at 26%. African all day. Um, at 14%, Benin and Togo. So, Benin and Togo, Cameroon, Togo, and Western, Bantu peoples in Nigeria. Shouts out to all y'all. My, my nigglets. I'm just joking. Um, this, this one's a doozy. 14% um, England and Northwestern Europe. Let me read that again. 14% rape England in Northwestern Europe. Let's go ahead. My past that. 12% Mali. Black folks don't like to read that European right there. <laughs> Especially if it's like the time. Um, 3% Ivory Coast in Ghana. Alright. 2% Senegal. I see you, Akon. You ain't, you ain't scamming nobody. Is it? I'm just joking. You know, come back. Um, 1% Southern Bantu peoples and coming in at a measly 1% as well, Ireland. Rape Ireland. You know what I'm talking about? So there you have it. These are my um, DNA test results. Now I'm still excited. I'm still excited. You know, like, don't think I, ooh, like, okay, so. <laughs> I'm all over the place on this one. Rock with me, rock with me. So when y'all read these, because this is another thing that I see pop up, some people don't truly understand how slavery worked. And they don't understand how so many different, um, how they specify here, how many nationalities, they don't understand why so many nationalities show up on their DNA tree. I'm explaining that in the most amateurish, way possible. You have to understand that during the slave trade, Europeans basically captured and or, you know, they had a situation with the, you know, some of the African, some of the African kings where they traded certain groups of ethnic groups in West and Central Africa. And a lot of times they would import our ancestors from different regions within Western Central Africa. Sometimes, you know, they intentionally did it for various reasons, whether like in South Carolina, if they wanted to cultivate rice in South Carolina, they would get specific groups from a particular reason or from a particular region in Africa, I believe maybe uh, some Gambia or something like that, the, the region at that time. I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me on that. But they did grab uh, these, this specific ethnic group from that particular region, not particular, from that specific region to go to South Carolina to work the plantations, the rice plantations, and cultivate rice. And, you know, in certain cases like Virginia, where they imported a lot of Igbo people and enslaved them, of course. And, I mean, there's several different ethnic groups that were brought here in America. We know that because there are records that trace specific ethnic groups in the Americas. You know, they're not readily available as, you know, they should be, especially considering how many of our ancestors they imported here in the Americas, but there is documentation to show different ethnic groups throughout the Americas. So that's why you have many different nationalities that show up. Also, I want to say that, because some people like, so I thought I was going to get clarity on 
where I belonged and seeing all these different groups just confuse things. It, it raises more questions, you know, leaves more answers on the table. This is what certain people have said, I haven't, I haven't said this. But you cannot necessarily look at these um, results and then look at the country and then say, okay, well, I'm Nigerian per se, or I'm Cameroon, Congo, because, you know, you have to look at the ethnic groups that were brought to this country at the time, the, the known ethnic groups, right? And so there were Igbo, there were Ba Congo, there were Kru, Mandinka, um, several, I'm talking several ethnic groups throughout the Americas that were brought here to America through the transatlantic slave trade and also through an intra-American um, slave trade, which was in Caribbean colonies, or colonies in the Caribbean that were brought to the mainland. So, you know, we have to look at those things as well. You can't just solely rely on the data here that's given to you on ancestry. You have to kind of, you know, you have to look beyond that. You have to read some books on the slave trade, you know, domestic slave trade, or you just the ethnic groups that were caught up in the slave trade. Those bits of information do exist. And I urge people to look beyond just these results because I think a lot of people don't look beyond that. And unfortunately, a lot of people, including our people, don't know the details about slavery. How, how it worked. You know, they don't understand that our ancestors did have identities, specific identities, ethnic identities that were um, very diverse. You know, and over time, of course, because of the process of child slavery, and, you know, we were stripped of a lot of our indigenous cultures. Contrary to popular belief, though, we have more remnants of our indigenous culture within our modern day creolized or creolization culture as we know today African American culture we have more remnants of our indigenous culture than a lot of people realize you know that takes study and research so I'm very you know it, it, it's showing the test results show that I'm, it's pretty consistent with my heritage DNA of course some different results but it's pretty consistent. I'm gonna show you how consistent it is. I did, I added up for y'all. The math was kind of math in all this. These are two different um, DNA test kits. They're not in cahoots with each other despite with these sea turtle oddities of these Hebrew Israelites. No offense, cuz, shouts out to you. I know, you know we're gonna talk about it later at the next family reunion. But <laughs> despite what they say, they're not in cahoots with each other. So. Uh, my heritage DNA, I did the, I did the calculations. Um, I was 84.3% African, according to my heritage DNA. As far as European, I was 12.9% rape European. And then I was 1.8 West Asian and 1.0 America or Mesoamerican. Um, according to Ancestry, I am 85% African and 15% European. <laughs> don't get to the 20s, just don't get to the 20s. I hang my hat on that, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, you see that it's, uh, it's a little differences, but it's, it's pretty damn close as far as the African um, ancestry breakdown, you know? I don't know what else to tell you. So yeah, y'all see that, you know, you see, like I said, it's still similar, it's some differences, but it's similar enough to show a consistency with African and even European, rape European, rape. Also, what I like about ancestry is the fact that they do show, like they, they show where your communities, what communities you belong to in America. So I guess it's like a timeline of different communities and the migration within um, the United States. So it shows like, hey, I belong to the, let me look this up. So I belong to like the early North Carolina African Americans, um, early Virginia, Virginia African Americans, and ended up in East Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana African American community group, which I thought that was interesting because, again, this is where you have to do research beyond the test results. I was able to trace back ancestors from the early 1800s, and even into the 1700s, and I could trace back 
several ancestors, one being in Maryland at the time. And I don't know anybody in Maryland, you know, that I'm related to, but I trace back this ancestor, first name Rose, to Maryland. And this was shortly after America's independence. So I thought that was pretty uh, interesting. I believe it had her parents' um, birthplace as well. I think her father might have been born in Maryland and then uh, her mother might have been born in Virginia or somewhere, if I'm not mistaken. Also, I was able to trace back another ancestor on my mother's side and found out that he was in, you know, he was born in North Carolina. His mother was also born in North Carolina and his father, which was a white man, he was born in England. And he, yes, he was definitely, clearly had to be a goddamn slave master. It, it's, it's just, it is what it is. Much older man than my ancestor's mother. Much older. So it was also molesting shit, as well as exploiting um, and enslaving in Africa. So my ancestor, which his first name was like Reverend Colin, he was born in North Carolina, Nash County, North Carolina. I don't know any family members in North Carolina as well. So that kind of adds up to, you know, the early communities, when, you know, when they trace it back, which is, that's not information I gave them, that's information that I, I discovered doing more research. So, there you have it. These are my DNA test results. Um, I don't know if I'll do another one. I'm not opposed to it, but uh, money, money. Y'all send me some cash at money. So there you have it. These are my ancestry DNA test results. Um, if you haven't did it, man, if you haven't done it, I suggest doing it. You know, learn something new. Even if you are a skeptic, take it. Some of y'all might not be skeptics. Y'all might just be too damn broke to be buying a DNA test kit. And that's okay. There's sales going on. Wait till Labor Day, Mother's Day, Memorial Day, one of them shits. And figure out, just get a glimpse of who your ancestors were. See if your um, information is adding up. Jump to my like and subscribe. Anything else to add to this? Please tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell their friends, your mama, to add Bishop's on TV to the YouTube playlist. This is Ben. Hello.